Welcome to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, and I am excited to be here with uh, Marta Sylvester from New Gen Packaging. How are you? Great. Ha happy to be here. Well, Thank again, you so happy, much. happy to have you, and um, you have an interesting story, and I'm, I'm going to learn along with the audience. And so, so I always like to start with the origin stories. You mm -hmm. know, one, I'm a, uh, an Avengers uh, fan. I like to always say the, the superhero <laughs> origin stories, and I think of people like you as superheroes. So, so you were born where, and where did you go to school, and how did you get into the business? Sure. So I was born in Brooklyn mm -hmm. to Puerto Rican parents that migrated in the 1950s okay. uh, in search of a better uh, financial mm -hmm. uh, situation. I have two older siblings, mm -hmm. uh, 10 and 11 years older, so mm -hmm. Technically, I had two sets of parents growing up, which mm. was kind of cool. And you were the baby. So you, I was you the, the baby. Spoiled, the I was baby, huh? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> and uh, so I attended uh, public school mm -hmm. uh, in Queens. In we Queens, we okay. moved to Queens uh, when I was about six years old. And so I attended a wonderful public school mm -hmm. right across the street from Queens College. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of student teachers that came on board. and. That public school for me was the foundation that really led to a lifetime of intellectual curiosity, oh, which wonderful. served me super well later on in life. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and so um, from, from that uh, grammar school, mm -hmm. I then went on to Rachel Carson Junior High School, okay. uh, also in Flushing. Mm -hmm. I attended two years at Rachel Carson Junior High School and really, it wasn't until later in life as well where you kind of really understand the influence Absolutely. That, yep. Yep. that all of these different things that happen in your life uh, have, have on you, uh, the effect that they have on you. And so for me, Rachel Carson Junior High School really mm. was impactful. Wow. And it was impactful because when I first attended Rachel Carson Junior High School, I didn't know who she was. I had no, no idea who she was, mm. right? But there was this amazing woman whose name was on a school. Right, right, right. right? That, that was so rare. Huge, that was so rare back then. Yeah. Super rare, yeah, right? It yeah. was the early 70s. Yeah. And so I'm sure that we learned something about Rachel mm -hmm. uh, when, when I attended the school. But most of what I learned, I learned at the library. Mm. So I was one of those library kids, right? right? I, right. I wanted to know something. I went to the library, and so I read a number of Rachel's books what to include I... Silent Spring. Oh, okay. And so that book really inspired me mm. uh, to a life uh, that kind of sort of led me to where I am today oh, with a sustainable packaging business. Right, right. And so Rachel taught me a lot of things. She taught me about being a woman mm -hmm. and learning not to be silenced, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. to, to stand on your convictions. And have your and, own voice, have your own voice. And have your own voice, right. absolutely. Right. And then as an environmentalist, she taught me that, you know, in nature, nothing exists alone, mm -hmm. right? We all have a part in what happens with our environment. Right. And so this um, was, again, sort of, you know, walking through that journey and uh, I then went went on to college mm -hmm. right well not from not from middle school that would have been quite the feat <laughs> I said you're precocious yeah, really, yeah, that, yeah. That, I, uh, I was good but I wasn't <laughs> that good um, so I uh, I went on to um, to high school to Midwood High School we moved back to Brooklyn okay mm -hmm. and then from Midwood <clears throat> High School I went to Pace University oh, Pace, yeah. Great school. Uh, yeah and um, <clears throat> married while I was at Pace University. I had my son and stayed at home for a few years. And then somewhere around 1992, we realized that in order to be financially stable, we really needed a second income, right? Like so many families even today. And so I decided I was going to venture out into the workforce. Mm -hmm. I hadn't completed my degree yet. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted some flexibility just so that um, so that I could still be uh, an effective mom. Right, so I right, thought that right. was going to be the key, right? Right. And so I thought I'd, I'd move on to a position in sales mm -hmm. um, Was uh, that was not successful for me. I learned mm -hmm. very quickly that there were some stereotypes right. that I was expected to, you know, expected to stay in the line. Right, so, right. so I was... Uh, I, I had to become an administrative assistant mm. uh, to a sales and marketing team 
for a blow molder in Brooklyn. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So there was a, a plastic packaging blow molder okay. in Canarsie on the border of East New York and Brooklyn. Right. And so I thought, well, I want a career in sales, but I need some method of getting there, right? And this is probably going to get me there. So I'll start there, I'll learn the business, and then I'll move on. Well, I got to Admiral Plastics, and I just became a sponge. I was just, mm -hmm. like, I just couldn't get enough of, you know, what we were doing, right. the plastics industry, the molding process. Now, were you in sales at that time, or? So, what? no, I wasn't. I wasn't yet. Right. I started out in uh, administrative, administrative assistant. EA so, executive assistant. Mm -hmm. So I did, you know, some secretarial duties, but really the bulk of the work that I did was in furtherance of the sales cycle. Right. So anything right. that helped the salespeople get in the door, right. uh, when they got in the door, mm -hmm. helping them prepare things that mm -hmm. would take them. But, to but the that's next great level. training to know the, the details and what uh, you know what you know all the back back office. Absolutely, stuff was absolutely. Key. And I was part of the conversation, right? right? So I was in all the meetings with when when the conversations were happening mm -hmm. about, all right, well, you know, here we are, we're sitting with the customer. What does the customer want? Mm -hmm. What information do we need to the, to get to the customer? How are we closing this sale? Right. And so that was all really interesting to mm -hmm. me. And very specifically, the pharmaceutical packaging part of the industry was even more fascinating to me because it required a lot of uh, detail right. about regulation, mm. um, how do we get a customer, the sales cycle is very long in the pharmaceutical industry, so how do we get the customer to make a switch, right. um, yeah. all of those things. Mm -hmm. So it was fantastic training. Um, I, I couldn't have asked for, right, right, for right, a, right. a better gig right at that point. It was right, an MBA point. Of, uh, of the business, right? Absolutely. And so within a year of being uh, in that position, the salesperson for the Midwest found another job and there was an opening. Mm -hmm. And quite the bold move on my part, I went in and I asked for that job. Really, really? Now, now your husband was supportive and the family, uh, it's like everything going to have to move. I mean, No, 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 I didn't have to move. Oh, you, oh, so, didn't? oh really? Oh, so okay. no, well, I didn't know it at the time, oh, okay. right? I, there was a possibility of that. Right. But I went in and I pitched that I could do this from here. Oh, okay, good for you. I mean, I could get in the, I could get on a plane right, and I could, right, you know, right, rent right, a car right, right. and I could, I could do all of that. After all, she lived in Chicago, so most of her time was spent on a plane. So why, I mean, I could do that from New York. Right, interesting. Well, I don't need to be in Chicago, right. right? So, so I went in, I pitched it, and I was told, well, that's. I'll, I won't use the, the vulgar language that we used at the time, but that's quite the bold move. I'll tell you what, we'll give you three months. Oh, wow. Okay. So I thought, wow, three months. Okay, I could do something in three months. Mm -hmm. I kind of already am mm -hmm. familiar with the customer base there because mm -hmm. I, I've been talking to them. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I would just but it, start organically. it shows their respect for you, too, the, the respect that they had with, with what you did to say, we're going to give you three months. Absolutely. That's, that's, well, and I think the key here, if if... If I'm going to leave any advice out there for anyone, mm -hmm. the key was I was never afraid to ask questions. Right, right. I was never afraid to be in the mix, and I always volunteered for everything yep. that would help me learn. That is, right? such, that is such great advice. That, and again, I have. We were talking earlier. I have a 16-year-old daughter who is, you know, class president and is doing all this stuff, but still doesn't necessarily have the confidence. I have to tell her to go speak to the waiter to do this as, as successful. And so often to see that presence of mind, that's that's rare, but um, but it pays dividends. Absolutely pays dividends. And and it's, you know, I think for me, the my my entire life has been um, feeling the fear, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and just <clears throat> moving toward it anyway. Yeah. Like. What's the worst that could so, happen? So no fear. Right? So that's, that's no, no, right. there was fear. Right. <laughs> let, let, let's, not, let, let's not make any mistake. There was a ton of fear. Uh, there were a lot of times right before a sales call that I would just go to the bathroom and retch. Right, right. Because I was right. so terrified that, that I would do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. The good thing about all of that was that I was paired with a mentor. Mm. Um, a gentleman by the name of Gabe Hickey, okay. who, in, who is very respected in our industry. Mm -hmm. He was amazing. Was he a boss? Was he a boss? He, he wasn't a boss. He was a salesperson as well. Okay. So, but he was experienced. Okay. And, and he, you know, really held my hand mm -hmm. through so many sales calls. I, he was a person that even to this day, if I picked up the phone and I called 
him and said, hey, I need some help or mm, I need some advice. That's wonderful. He would be there for me. He was that wonderful. kind of mentor. He was, he was fabulous. And so I, I, at the very least, had somebody that I could sort of, you know, count on to, right. to guide me. And so, uh, so I did that. I, I went on to work for other manufacturers as right. well as distribution. Right. And so in manufacturing... So, so, so the three months when you did that, what happened after the three months? What, uh... Oh, well, so after the three months, um, and by the way, the coolest thing about that job was that I got a company car, oh, wow. and that company car came equipped with a car phone. Oh, other, you yeah, remember yeah, those car phones, phones, right? That was one of these big uh, car phones. That, <laughs> and, right. and the people you see, the other, they were so proud that they had this big phone. That, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, I'm cool. You know, That's I right. A, now it would be so embarrassing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, 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 that, so after the three months, mm -hmm. I mean, it was clear that I was capable of handling the job. Right. I mean, you know, um, personally, I kind of felt like, oh, I was, you know, Am I really doing a good job? Mm. I, I wasn't sure that I was that I was um, uh, doing the right thing mm. at the time. Mm. But I I was growing the business organically, right. and so at the end of the day, that was really the important thing. Right, right. And so I I kept the job, uh, and then uh, the company was sold, and I stayed mm. on with them for a little while, and then I moved on to another manufacturer. Okay. And then, uh, and then distribution. Okay. So distribution was an amazing education mm -hmm. because I wasn't solely focused on the goods of the one manufacturing process, right? right? right. I was able to learn more, mm -hmm. more processes, um, more uh, uh, industries, right. right? Because now you're you're you have a huge book of uh, business that you can right. go after, right? And so. Uh, I stayed within distribution, mm -hmm. and I sort of rose in the ranks mm -hmm. from sales rep to mm -hmm. account manager to VP of sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. let, let me stop, because one of the things, the reason I was, I was asking about, about, because I often do a lot of lectures and talk about the difference between a mentor and a sponsor, mm -hmm. and, that, and it sounds like you have, because so many people, um, you know, especially, especially women, especially people of color, will have a mentor, someone who'll give them guides, but that sponsor is the one who's behind the room who says, you know, Mart Marta needs to be promoted, she needs a raise, she needs, and so often we'll have all sorts of people advising us, but we don't have someone in the back room advocating for it. Sounds like oh, you did I that, so how, do you, how were you able to get the sponsors to really help you rise? Because you won't rise without a sponsor in there saying good things about you. Well, it was, it was, knowing that I had a voice and that mm -hmm. I had to use that voice, right, right, right? and right. that I had to promote myself. Right, because right. I, I really didn't have anybody that was outwardly advocating right. for me. But you added value to them so that when they were yes. making that decision, you Absolutely. said, you know, we need to promote her or we may lose her or this. And so, so you had those, you don't have to have a close relationship, but you, you had those folks who were, really, who were really willing to be behind the scenes. So, uh, so that's, that's good. Now we're going to take a, a commercial, a short commercial break, sure. but we'll pick it up right there because this is, this is great advice because this is all about the entrepreneurial mindset. It's not just about having your own business. And some people have the entrepreneurial mindset. Some people have what I call the incremental mindset where uh, I'll do whatever you tell me to do, but I'm not going to do it unless you tell right. me. And obviously you don't have that. So, uh, so we will be back in a minute after the commer short commercial break with Marta Sylvester. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek.
Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Casinos by the ocean. Now that's New Jersey. Welcome back to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, with uh, Marta Sylvester um, from New Gen. And so, so you, you, we've talked about your manufacturing. I want to jump right in. So, what did you do just before you started this company? What 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 forced you to launch the the company? So, I was uh, in distribution. Mm -hmm. The company that I worked for at the time was about to sell to one of the largest. Uh, distributors in the world right. at the time. And I just did not want to go work for that company. Mm -hmm. I, I really had a different vision. I, I wanted to do something uh, more sustainable. This was mm -hmm. at about the time that really everybody was starting to really take note that packaging was contributing negatively right. to the environment. Right. Right. And so I, again, my history, right? Right, right. The, yeah, the, yeah. I have that, that entire history, and I thought, well, there, there are things that we can do. Why are we doing it? Why are we raising the alarm and finding sustainable solutions mm -hmm. that can get us there? Why isn't anybody doing that? And right. the, the more I spoke to other people in the industry, the more I realized that there, you know, people had done things, but um, typically they didn't end well, and mm. so end operative word and right, so you right. know the whatever projects they were working on ended uh, horribly hard fails and they just kind of you know all right well we'll deal with it later right which um, was not okay with me mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I knew that there were there were opportunities to do things there were companies out there that were doing really fabulous things right. and one of those things was post consumer regrind mm -hmm. so taking product from the recycling stream mm -hmm. and repelletizing it and making new products of it. So I, I was really interested in that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And so um, I decided, well, I'm going to jump off of the entrepreneurial cliff. Right, right. And one of two things is going to happen. Either there's going to be a splat at the other mm -hmm. end, in which case not you know, something that I haven't ever had happened to me in the past, right? right? I'll right. dust off the CV <laughs> and I'll find a, another job. Right. Big deal, right? Mm -hmm. I'm confident in what I know in the industry. But on the flip side, if things went well, mm -hmm. I would at least buy myself one more year. Right, right, right. right. And I could keep moving mm -hmm. forward and you know, nine years later, almost almost well, ten years, we're we're still here. We're doing well. We're so, so. What was your first product? What was the first uh, product? And, and, and one of the things that people often say is, I'm either going to uh, succeed or I'm going to learn. So you don't you don't lose. You you know you're going to learn or succeed. And so so all right. So you, you start the company. It was it same name company. New Gen Packaging. New Gen Packaging. And so what was the very first product that you had? And so one of the first things that I did because I knew that I, I had to have some sort of income, yeah. right? I was working out of my home, but I, I knew the market, I knew my customer base, right. and so I went to one of my, still to this day, they're, they're a great customer, generic pharmaceutical customer, Okay. and I said, well, I'm gonna launch my own business, will you come with me? Mm. And they said, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. And they did. Wow. And then I had another, uh, customer in the contract packaging business, mm -hmm. and I asked him the same thing, and he said, uh, "Yeah, absolutely, I'll, I'll support you." He was an entrepreneur, and, okay. and the business that I was with before, uh, we mm -hmm. we supported him when he started right, his business. Right. Now, so now, were they coming? Were they joining your team, or were they they giving the business? They were giving you the, their business. They were switching their business from someone else to you. Exactly. They were they, switching. Uh, their and what kind of packaging thing. were they making? What were they? Uh... So plastic packaging. Right. Okay. Um, uh, CRC closures, okay. child resistant closures, okay. white plastic bottles wow. for okay. drugs. Wow. For wow. pharmaceutical drugs. Love it. And uh, so yeah, so so they said, okay, we'll we'll switch, we'll come on board, we'll mm -hmm. support your business. Mm -hmm. we, but but we what about man, the plant the, the 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 machines and other things? Well, how did you how did you finance that? 
So I didn't have to finance any of it because I wasn't manufacturing any of okay. it. Okay. Uh -huh. I went to the factory, so that was uh -huh. part two, right? Uh -huh. So you Interesting. Do, okay. Will your customers support you, right. right? So yes, okay, we have that customer support. Now will the factory support me? Right, okay. Because now I'm, I'm a standalone, right? Right, right. And so I went to the factory. I knew ownership at the factories, mm -hmm. and I went to them and I said, hey, I'm starting this right. company. Will you support me? Well, um, some of the factories supported me, mm -hmm. and some of them were afraid to support me. Which is them? Which I understood, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm really, they know me right. personally, but now right. I'm starting to do an entirely different thing. Right. You know, is she gonna is she gonna stick the landing, right. or right. you know, right. or what are right. we talking about here? But they had other people too. They were working with too, right? So they would have to. So they may have had to relate deep relationships with those folks as well. Right. So they're not going to give up those relationships for a risk. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I was okay with that mm -hmm. because I felt that. And, and I, I, I don't know why I uh, felt this, right? Because you, sometimes you do, do things, as I said, you, you know, do, you feel the fear, mind. but yeah. you do it anyway, right? Yeah. I felt, well, you know what? If they don't want to sell me a bottle, I'll go to another company. Right. There are plenty of companies that sell components, and there might be another company that wants to align themselves with someone like me who exactly. knows the marketplace, yep. right? And mm -hmm. so that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Whoever decided not to support me, right. I just moved on. Right, right. They're all supporting me now, right. but at that time, right. they weren't. So I just found somebody else that would. And I, and I changed things around. So, mm -hmm. okay, not everyone in the generic pharmaceutical uh, book of business that mm -hmm. I had followed me. Mm -hmm. And so I found other things to sell. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I started going after the personal care market okay. because that was an easier entry right. uh, in, into, that, into that market than right. pharmaceutical. Right. Long sales cycle in pharmaceutical, super short one mm -hmm. in personal care. But that's the entrepreneur state of mind. You're constantly looking for opportunity. You're right. constantly searching and, and, right. and prodding and Absolutely. checking. Absolutely. So I'm determined, I'm gonna get from A to Z Maybe a windy road, right, right. but I'm well, going to get there. Well, it's always a winding road. See, right. It's never a straight Absolutely. line. It's always a winding road, which makes it makes it interesting. And so, um, so, so now, where are you now? So, the, you know, as far as this, I mean, uh, how many employees do you have, and what's what's going on with the company? So, at the moment, uh, we share uh, warehouse employees. I have a warehouse and okay. offices in Hillside, uh, New Jersey. Oh, although, nice. okay. since the pandemic, yeah, the pandemic is, is real, I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, it has been uh, really difficult. So, we've been working at home. Um, but what I did a couple of years ago, um, I had five employees. Mm, okay. And uh, and and I had partners because this is a crazy windy road as you yeah, say yeah. and then so the partners are gone mm -hmm. and there was a come to Jesus moment mm -hmm. you know um, do I do I move ahead mm -hmm. and if I do how am I going to do that and am I going to be true to my convictions right right, right. why I founded the company was sustainable packaging somewhere right. along the road I kind of lost that mm. because when you bring in partners there's right, a whole right. different they mindset. They don't have the same agenda they you no. know. So so now I had to make a decision and unfortunately part of that decision was now I'm I'm riding alone mm -hmm. and I need to find somebody that's going to have the same uh level of conviction that I do, right, the same right. work ethic, right. right? And so I found someone that, that was working for me, right? right? So she came on, she stayed with me. Mm -hmm. So it was she and I. Right. Um, within that next year, we doubled the business. Oh, wow, wow. Just the two of us. And what year was this? This was? Uh... This was uh, 2019. 2019, wow, okay. 2019, okay. we doubled the business. And I was sharing uh, warehouse staff, mm -hmm. uh, so that, that wasn't a big deal. We had the warehouse uh, in the same building. Right. And um, so now we're in a position where we're, we're growing. Mm -hmm. I'm in hiring mode. Right, right. Uh, we're really excited. We're doing business today with, with Unilever, with Colgate. Oh, really? Uh, on sustainable projects, wow, which is the, the thing that's so fascinating the, and so and, and so timely now, is in the, you know, especially with the, this administration. So unfortunately, we just have a little bit of time, but now are you a, a MBE certified? Are you MBE certified in New Jersey? Not yet. 
Well, now, now, now why? I know, why? Yeah, I know. That, that's something you have to do. And Absolutely. so we work with folks on, on that, and I can connect you with the person at the, the governor's office that does that, because that's, that's really important. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to do is push pub, all public organizations to list on their website how much they spend with veteran certified, women certified, and minority certified businesses. Mm -hmm because they often don't get some, some opportunities that they have. And so, um, um, well, well this, is, this has really been, been wonderful, getting to know you. How do people find your organization? What's your website? What's the contact information? If you could, you could share sure. that with them. So we're at uh, newgenpackaging.com. There's uh, contact information there. We're in the process of uh, putting together a brand new website solely focused on the sustainable packaging components that we are currently supplying to the industry and innovation as it's occurring so that we can totally understand what's coming, what's being innovated, and, and more importantly, what brands have today, today that they can utilize in furtherance of a greener environment. So give us a call if you have a brand new package that's, um, that you're thinking about or if you have an existing brand that you really want to take from a fossil fuel derived component to a renewable component, or if you're just looking to refresh your packaging, give us a call. We're happy to help. We work with small companies and large companies. Our goal is to bring sustainable packaging to the industry so that we can have a brighter tomorrow for our children. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Marta, and, and I'm going to symbolize the end of the pandemic by shaking your hand <laughs> right? <laughs> on TV. Fabulous. So, thank, you. thank you very much. This has been wonderful. Thank I you. want to thank you for watching Entrepreneur State of Mind. Marta Sylvester, CEO of Nugen Packaging. I think you will hear more and more about this successful entrepreneur. So uh, take care, and we will see you next time at Entrepreneur State of Mind.